there's been a few times in my life where I've read a random YouTube comment or a review on Steam about how a game changes their life. Some may even say that the game saved their life. The closest experience I've had to this was my first time playing Persona 3 FES. And it may even just came to me at the perfect time. Without getting too deep into it, I was in an unhealthy mindset and would visit a therapist. I think that description paints enough of a picture. There's no denying that Persona 3 is a story about death. But that's not the only reason why the game resonated with me. Persona 3 is also a story about life, and it's shown through its cast of characters, both the heroes and villains. The moment man devoured the fruit of knowledge, he sealed his fate. Entrusting his future to the cards, man clings to a dim hope. Yes, the Arcana is the means by which all is revealed. Attaining one's dream requires a stern will and unfailing determination. The Magician's Arcana is all about potential, willpower, and maybe even finding a sense of purpose. Junpei initially comes off as a perverted goofball, who only joins Seas for some semblance of glory. He's excited to go to Tartarus and gets jealous when you, the main character, get assigned the leadership role. Junpei is selfish. But this would start to change upon his meeting with Chidori. Chidori will get her own section in this video, so I won't dive into her character arc too much here in this segment. Essentially, Chidori is a bit of a weirdo like Junpei, and the two would form some kind of a romantic interest for one another. But it's Chidori's death that drives Junpei over the edge. Up until this point, Junpei has always fought and acted in his own self-interest, but now he's fighting for someone else. He is fighting for Shidori. While Junpei's arc is about being more selfless, he also comes to terms that being average is okay. Not everyone is the main character, not everyone is the hero, not everyone is special. And that's okay. The Arcana is the means by which all is revealed. The silent voice within one's heart whispers the most profound wisdom. The Priestess Arcana is symbolic of wisdom and knowledge. And apparently these two attributes are specifically about women which may explain why only female characters have been associated with the priestess in the Persona series. This includes Fuka Yamagishi. Fuka is shy and reserved and rarely speaks up. She does get bullied and has an inferiority complex but does eventually gain a self-confidence boost. But even with her newfound confidence, she doesn't change much. She is still quiet and speaks when deemed necessary. I think it would be unreasonable if Fuka went from introvert to extrovert at the flip of a switch. If anything, the lesson here is that you don't need to drastically change yourself to appease people. Because if you're always trying to please people, then are you ever truly being yourself? The Arcana is the means by which all is revealed. Celebrate life's grandeur, its brilliance, its magnificence. The Empress Arcana can mean many things. Motherhood, nurture, sexuality, wealth, luxury, and prosperity. There's no denying that Mitsuru has all of these, except for motherhood. 
but I do think that Nick's quote about the Empress Arcana is more focused on the luxury aspect, specifically the luxuries that life gives you. Mitsuru comes from a wealthy family and has been practically sheltered from how the common foe live their lives. Much of her social link is learning the aspects of life that she never engaged with, primarily eating cheap and affordable food. I'm not kidding, you take this woman on a dinner date to McDonald's. As cliche as it is, Mitsuru also learns the luxury of friendship. But what makes Mitsuru different is her position as an heiress to a large company and the formal mannerisms that come with it. She treats the other C's members as business partners rather than friends. It's not until she emotionally opens up to Yukari where she realizes that there are people who care about her as an individual rather than her status and importance to her father's company. She doesn't need to be so formal all the time. With the right people around her, she can finally relax and have a bit of fun. The Arcana is the means by which all is revealed. Only courage in the face of doubt can lead one to the answer. The Emperor Arcana is all about strength and even control to some extent. Akihiko already lost his sister due to a fire. This would be his motivation to strive for self-improvement. Through both strength and courage, Akihiko believes that he could prevent anyone from dying. That is until Shinjiro's death. While Akihiko does initially feel powerless in preventing Shinji's death, he does come to terms that it was not his fault. Shinji made his own decision and knew the risks. You cannot control everyone or everything. Akihiko had to learn this the hard way, but when he does, he chooses to fight for the living and to keep moving forward. The Arcana is the means by which all is revealed. It is indeed a precious gift to understand the forces that guide oneself. Morality and righteousness are attributed to the Hierophant Arcana. Shinjiro left seas ever since his persona went out of control and killed an innocent civilian, that being Ken's mother. He's been filled with guilt since then and decided that it would be safer for those around him if he did not engage with the Dark Hour. It's an interesting contrast from Akihiko. Akihiko's response to death is to gain more power. Shinji's response to death is to walk away. But this is not to say that Shinji is some brooding edgelord. With great power comes great responsibility. Unfortunately for Shinji, his power, that being his persona, got the better of him and costed someone's life. I think Shinjiro is an example of how you can use guilt and regret to motivate and educate yourself. Being able to accept your mistakes and learn from them. Maybe those lessons can also be used to guide others. The Arcana is the means by which all is revealed. There is both joy and wonder in coming to understand another. The Lover's Arcana goes beyond just love and romance. Trust is the most prominent theme in Yukari's story. When we first meet Yukari, there's already a sense of uneasiness behind her, as if we're only seeing a fraction of a whole picture. She has difficulties opening up to others due to a damaged relationship with her mother and her father's passing. Her father's death is the more important of the two details. Yukari's dad worked for Mitsuru's company, the Kurijo Group, but would eventually die under their supervision. Mitsuru knows about this and hides it from Yukari. 
Although Mitsuru does admit to this information, the fact that it was withheld from Yukari for so long is what heightens her trust issues. In both the main story and throughout her social link, she begins to open up about her past and what people mean to her. She learns to trust you, the main character, and repairs her relationship with Mitsuru. Go out and talk to people, I think is an oversimplified way of summarizing Yukari's story. I would describe it as, make an effort to understand people. After all, everybody has a story to tell. The Arcana is the means by which all is revealed. One of life's greatest blessings is the freedom to pursue one's goals. The Chariot represents victory and determination. Aiga's mission is to protect the main character and to win the war against the Shadows. This would turn into an extensive journey for her, where she learns to think for herself rather than purely following orders. I guess the story is not just the robot learns emotions trope, but she also learns what it means to be alive, what it means to have a finite amount of time in this world. With I guess being a robot, theoretically, she can live an indefinite number of lifetimes and outlive all the members of Seas. Following orders was her purpose, but with peace achieved and without orders to follow, what is she supposed to do next? I would not be surprised if I guess character arc served as some inspiration for Near Automata, but I feel like that's a discussion for another time. The Arcana is the means by which all is revealed. To find the one true path, one must seek guidance amidst uncertainty. The Justice Arcana represents justice, who would have guessed, rationale, and truth. I find it interesting how Ken falls under the Justice Arcana. Ken is on a quest for vengeance, because avenging the death of his mother is justice to him. That is until his confrontation with Shinji, the man who accidentally killed his mother. Shinji was willing to let Ken kill him. But at the same time, he does warn Ken that it would not lead to the satisfaction he desired. Even after Shinji dies at the hands of Strega, Ken is still worried about not getting his revenge. It wouldn't be until a talk with Akihiko that he learns to accept his mother's death and move on, and in a way, forgives Shinji. Ken can no longer be just a kid. Through the death of his mother and his time with Seas, he's slowly learning and accepting how brutal and unforgiving life can be. And the most he can do is keep going. The Arcana is the means by which all is revealed. It requires great courage to look at oneself honestly and forge one's own path. The Hermit Arcana is emblematic of wisdom and solitude. I do think Jin is underdeveloped, which seems to be changed for the remake, but I'll work with what I got. Jin and the other Stray Gun members were all part of a live science experiment conducted by the Kurijo group. Jin, Takaya, and Chidori were the few survivors of the experiment and it left them with a deep hatred towards anyone attached to the Kurijo group, including C's. But revenge doesn't seem to be the motive. Jin's defining characteristic is his loyalty to Takaya, the leader of Strega. But even with this high level of devotion, Jin is still shown to be the most rational member of Strega. He knows what he's doing, why he's doing it, and what the consequences are. And yet, he does not care. I think I could summarize Jin in a famous movie quote. Some men just want to watch the world burn. 
the Arcana is the means by which all is revealed. Alongside time exists fate, the bearer of cruelty. Luck, fate, and opportunity are attributed to the Fortune Arcana. Takaya is one of the survivors alongside both Jin and Shidori. Due to his near-death experience, Takaya would find the group known as Strega, which operated under the combination of two philosophies, Hedonism and Nihilism. Hedonism being the idea of do whatever makes you happy, and nihilism is the idea that life has no meaning. What makes Takaya so terrifying is his disregard for life, even his own. There's no fear nor ethics to hold him back. We do know that he does find pleasure in murder, but I would not be surprised if he found satisfaction in other taboo activities. I think Takaya is a lesson on how trauma shapes a person but so do the other characters in Persona 3. It all comes down to how you choose to handle that trauma. The Arcana is the means by which all is revealed. Only with strength can one endure suffering and torment. The Strength Arcana consists of endurance, self-control, and self-improvement. I think Koamaru has one of the simpler backstories, because he's a dog, but there's enough to work with. Koamaru previously had an owner who would eventually pass away. Koamaru, being the loyal pup that he is, chooses to stay at his master's shrine every day and even risk his life defending it from shadows. Even after he joins your party, you take him on walks to and from the shrine. Koromaru's story is not just about loyalty, but also about sentimental value. Because of his fond memories of his previous master, the shrine has importance to him. While other characters learn to move on, Koromaru continues to hold on to the past. Because for Koromaru, the past does not hold him back. Instead, it's his strength. The Arcana is the means by which all is revealed. In the face of disaster lies opportunity for renewal. The Hangman is about sacrifice and altruism. Shidori is introduced as a member of Strega, but she doesn't consider the other members as friends. She's just there. It's not until her interactions with Junpei that we learn about her fears of attachment. But I think that she specifically fears the pain of loss. Whereas Ken, Akihiko, and Mokoromaru use loss to strengthen their resolve, Shidori believes that loss would be a detriment to her. So she chooses to live in the moment without any emotional attachments. That is until she meets Junpei. She overcomes her fear of loss and attachment and is willing to give her life to save Junpei's. There's definitely a lesson about conquering fear in Shidori's story, but just like Junpei's character arc, I also think that there is once again a message about living for someone else rather than for just yourself. And it seems to be that Shidori would realize this in her final moments. The moment man devoured the fruit of knowledge, he sealed his fate. Entrusting his future to the cards, man clings to a dim hope. Yet the Arcana is the means by which all is revealed. Beyond the beaten path lies the absolute end. It matters not who you are. Death awaits you. In my own research, death in tarot readings usually refers to change, the death of a child, the birth of a man. But what Nick's avatar says, 
does refer to literal death. We are all going to die one day, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. So, I'm left with two questions. How do you want to live your life, and how do you want people to remember you? Persona 3 offers me multiple answers throughout its characters alone. And if you don't have your own answer yet, maybe I guess here can help you find one. After fighting alongside you and facing the world's end, I finally began to understand what it means to live. Thinking for yourself, not running away. Accepting the inevitable. All things eventually come to an end. Every living thing will one day disappear. Only by accepting this can one discover what they truly want. What the meaning of their life will be. You don't have to save the world to find meaning in life. Sometimes, all you need is something simple, like someone to take care of. There you are, you sons of bitches! 